Okay, then it's it's time to uh, start. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, I, I know it's pretty late night in some parts of the world, but uh, from wherever you're listening to. Uh, welcome to the Biologically Speaking webinar series. I'm Shonak, uh, a postdoctoral fellow at the National Institutes of Health in the United States and a co-founder of Biologically Speaking, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. Uh, Biologically Speaking is an academic interest group uh, funded by the American Society for Cell Biology and initiated by a group of PhD students and postdoc from around the world, where we bring amazing discoveries performed in the field of biological sciences and allied subjects with an aim to initiate a scientific mindset among the mass. 20th October is considered to be World CRISPR Day and to celebrate what we as a scientific community has achieved with CRISPR, a microbial immune system that has been extensively studied and applied to innovative technologies such as genome editing. It is also fresh in our minds that it was the subject of last year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry. On this occasion, Biologically Speaking is delighted to be joined by Professor Hiroshi Nishimashu from University of Tokyo today. And tomorrow we are hosting Professor Neville Sanjana from the New York Genome Center in the United States. Before we start today's session, a couple of housekeeping stuff. If you have any questions for the speaker, please do write it on the chat box. If you're watching it through Zoom or if you're watching it through the YouTube, uh, please post your questions on the chat box and we will moderate them at the end of today's session. The talk will also be archived on our YouTube channel so you can revisit anytime after the talk uh, for this uh, session. So without further delay, it is my great pleasure to host Professor Hiroshi Nishimashu, who is a professor at Research Center for Advanced Science and Technology, University of Tokyo. Dr. Nishimashu is a pioneer and a rising star in structural biology who has just launched his own laboratory in the summer of 2020. Uh, Hiroshi has made remarkable breakthroughs in understanding and applying the structure and function of the CRISPR-Cas system from the viewpoint of structural biology. For example, he was the first in the world to determine the crystal structure of the Streptococcus pyogenes Cas9 guide RNA target DNA complex, which is widely used for genome editing. Furthermore, through the structure-guided protein engineering, he successfully redesigned the three-dimensional structure of Cas9 based on the structure he discovered and extended the range of application of genome editing technology. In addition, using single molecule observations, he has succeeded in capturing a movie of the process of DNA cleavage by Cas9. And apart from Cas9, Dr. Nishimashi used cryo-electron microscopy to determine the structure of other Cas enzymes, like the guide RNA target DNA complex of Cas12F, the smallest known Cas enzyme. And through structure function analysis of Cas12F, he revealed a completely new mode of action of the Cas enzymes. Recently, Dr. Nishimashi also received a prestigious fellowship from the Inamori Foundation from Japan in 2021. And with that, thank you Hiroshi for taking the time to speak today on Biologically Speaking. I know it's very late in Japan, but truly appreciate that you're doing this and very much looking forward to your talk. Over to you. Okay, can I start? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you very much for a uh, nice introduction. And uh, I didn't, Imagine that you uh, know that I get the uh, Inamori Foundation uh, this year. <laughs> so I like also thank other organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk here. Uh, today I'd like to talk about a uh, uh, previous uh, structural study of the uh, Streptococcus pyogenesis Cas9, the most famous CRISPR Cas enzymes and the most widely uh, used for genome editing technologies. And then I'd like to share more recent uh, data about the uh, compact Cas12F enzymes uh, for uh, the cryo micro uh, analysis. And this uh, uh, Cas12F structure provided as an unexpected 
insight into the evolution of uh, diverse CRISPR-Cas enzymes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start with a brief introduction of uh, CRISPR-Cas systems. Uh, bacteria and archaea uh, have an adaptive immune system called CRISPR-Cas uh, and fight against uh, invading uh, nucleic acid such as uh, plasmids and uh, phages, bacteriophages, bacteria, bacteria, will virus. In the genome of microbes, the, there are repeated sequences called CRISPR arrays, which uh, consist of uh, uh, repeat sequences of uh, uh, identical lengths, usually yeah. around the, uh, oh, sorry, around the uh, 30 base pair, and the spacer sequence uh, that is uh, have uh, ident uh, determined uh, given the length and the variety of the uh, um, sequence. And the CRISPR array is uh, transcribed and processed into uh, mature CRISPR RNA, which then assemble with the uh, uh, effector cast proteins. And, the, and then the Cas uh, CRISPR RNA uh, complex uh, degraded the target nucleic acid that is complementary to a uh, spacer sequence uh, in the CRISPR RNA guides. This, uh, the spacer sequence is originally derived from the previously infected foreign nucleic acid. So uh, the CRISPR Cas system function as an adaptive immune system against the foreign nucleic acid. The CRISPR-Cas system can be divided into two classes, the class one and the class two. The class one effect complexes uh, uh, called cascade, type one cascade and type three CSM and CMR uh, formed by multiple uh, Cas uh, proteins and a single CRISPR RNA. In contrast, class two effect uh, uh, protein such as Cas9 in type 2 and Cas12 in type 5 consist of a single Cas protein of uh, multiple domains and uh, guide RNAs. Among these diverse Cas enzymes, the Cas9 and Cas12 are now uh, widely used for uh, many applications such as genome editing. Uh, in type 2, Cas9 bind uh, guide RNA. And uh, naturally, two guide RNAs, CRISPR RNA and uh, uh, trans activating CRISPR RNA or tracer RNA or artificial uh, single guide RNA, uh, where the CRISPR RNA and the tracer RNAs are, are linked uh, by uh, GAA tetra loop. And the Cas9 guide RNA complex recognize the double stranded DNA target and cleave uh, the DS RNA that is complementary to the 20 nucleotide uh, guide segment of the guide RNA using two nuclease domain called HNH and LAVC. In addition to the complement base complementality between the uh, guide segment and the target uh, DNA, the Cas9 requires uh, a short nucleotide uh, motif uh, next to the target sequence on the DNA. Uh, this uh, motif, short DNA motif called the protospace adjacent motif or PAM. And uh, uh, the PAM sequence differ uh, among the uh, different Cas9 enzymes from different bacteria. And uh, S pyrogenesis Cas9, uh, that is uh, widely used for genome editing, uh, recognize the uh, NGG uh, sequence as a PAM. As you know, in 2013, several groups, including Fanzan's lab, reported uh, that Cas9 can be used for uh, genome editing in uh, eukaryotic cell, including human cells. 
And uh, uh, Cas9 is now widely used for many applications such as demo editing and the base editing, translational uh, regulation, epigenet epigenetic editing, uh, epigenome editing, and chromosomal uh, imaging. In uh, 2012, uh, uh, Cas9 was biochemically characterized uh, and the Cas9 is a report, is a, 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 such a biochemical study report uh, revealed that Cas9 is a RNA guided DNA endonuclease, uh, but the, its DNA cleavage mechanisms was uh, uh, unclear at that time. Uh, since Cas9 lacks uh, sequence similarity with other known uh, proteins, except for uh, LabC and HNH domain. And LabC uh, motif uh, was located at the three separate part on the primary sequence of the Cas9 proteins. So we wanted to understand how, how the Cas9 guide RNA complex specifically recognize uh, and cleave target DNA. So we started structural uh, studies of Cas9 in collaboration with the Fenzans uh, lab uh, at the Broad Institute. Uh, you know, the Fenzans uh, for the first time reported uh, CRISPR Cas9, Cas9 mediated genome editing. Uh, for a structure analysis, we uh, I first explored the uh, many different uh, conditions for crystallization. And we eventually found that the Cas9 protein and the uh, guide RNA and the, uh, a single-stranded DNA that is complementary to 20 nucleotide guide segment form a relatively stable complex that can be purified on gel filtration. And, uh, I obtained after a uh, trial and uh, the good crystal of uh, Cas9 uh, guide RNA target DNA tunnelly uh, complex and determine its uh, crystal uh, structure. Uh, we are very lucky and we can, we could determine the uh, uh, crystal structure of the complex at 2.5 angstrom resolution, relatively high resolution for a large uh, protein RNA nucleic acid complex, and uh, where we can look at, uh, we can see the clearly the RNA guide RNA molecule and the uh, uh, DNA complement DNA and the uh, Cas9 uh, proteins. In the uh, 2.5 angstrom resolution electron density map, we can distinguish the uh, pyrimidine and uh, purine base, and we can clearly see the base Watson click base pairing between the guide RNA and the uh, target DNA. For example, the uh, C. Uh, guide RNA uh, must C in the guide RNA a base pair uh, to the Z in uh, target DNA. And we also clearly uh, look at the uh, side chain of the Cas9 uh, protein portion. Uh, the structure of the Cas9 uh, RNA DNA complex revealed that the Cas9 consists of two lobes. The one lobe, the shown a uh, 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 colored gray, uh, consists of uh, mostly alpha helices and involved in the RNA DNA uh, recognition. So we name this alpha helical lobe uh, recognition lobe, rec lobe. The other lobe contains two nuclei, uh, uh, two nucleus domain, uh, HNH and lab C. So uh, we named this the second lobe, nucleus lobe, nucleus lobe. And the 20 nucleotide guide segment colored in uh, red in these uh, movies uh, form a Watson-Click base pair 
with the target DNA shown in black. Uh, this uh, structure feature explained that RNA guided DNA targeting mechanisms of uh, Cas9. And the lab C active site is located around uh, here. And uh, uh, this location is suitable for the cutting of a single stranded non target DNA strand, the, uh, this strand, the, which is consistent with the bio previous biochemical uh, data. In contrast, HNH domain, colored magenta, and the active site of HNH domain is located here, along here. So a uh, little bit away from the previous site uh, here, the third and the fourth, uh, the HNH domain cleave uh, phosphodiester bond between of the third and the fourth nucleotide in the target strand, that hybridizer uh, guide RNA. Uh, indicating that HNH domain undergo a structure change and uh, reach to the uh, cleavage site, as uh, I'll uh, re uh, demonstrate it uh, in the uh, uh, high speed AFM analysis, I I'll show you later. In addition, the structure indicated that PAM sequence, NGD sequence on the target DNA which is not including in this crystal structure is uh, located around here. And uh, our mutation analysis show that actually the, this C terminal domain, we named the uh, PAM interacting domain, PI domain, recognize NGG PAM sequence. And uh, more in the, uh, after my, uh, this, uh, uh, complex structure is published at the Martin Inex lab uh, did, uh, reported the Cas9 complex structure contained in GGPAM. And uh, Tana, that structure uh, actually revealed that two adding residues in the PI domain recognize uh, uh, GG nucleotide in the PAM. That's this complex structure for the first time explained that a fundamental molecular mechanism of uh, RNA guided uh, DNA recognition and cleavage by Cas9 enzymes. Uh, we next wanted to understand the functional dynamics of uh, Cas9 and studied the collaboration with uh, Dr. Shibata and Kodera at Kanazawa University, who are specialists of a uh, high speed atomic force microscopy, uh, high-speed AFM. In high-speed AFM that we use a, a tiny needle. The tiny needle scans the surface of a molecule of interest to give information about the height of the molecule. And importantly, the needle moves so quickly that it can produce a nanometer scale molecule movie at real time. So we designed a 600 base pair double strand DNA that contained a single uh, target site. And we uh, mixed the uh, Cas9 RNA, guide RNA complex with this designed double strand DNA, and then observed the mixture uh, solution using high-speed AFM. Uh, we first confirmed that the Cas9 RNA a complex specifically bind to the uh, expected target site in the uh, double strand DNA substrate. Uh, next, uh, we did collect the AFM movie for uh, Cas9 RNA DNA complex. I'll show AFM movie here. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, blob represents the RNA DNA. Uh, sorry, RNA, uh, Cas9 RNA complex, and uh, this uh, is a, a target DNA. And uh, uh, this bright blob represents a uh, correspond to HNH domain. And in FN observation, uh, and the HNH domain two uh, state 
active state and con two conventions, active and inactive conformation. In uh, this is a inactive conformation where the HNH domain is far from the previous site of DNA, uh, which is located in the uh, inside of molecule. So HNH is uh, located uh, surface of uh, Cas9 molecule. So uh, we can HNH domain looks more bright. In contrast, uh, when HNH domain adapt the active state uh, and uh, located inside the molecule, uh, this uh, blob uh, disappear. So we can distinguish uh, active and inactive state of the HNH domain in AFM movie. The uh, inact inactive state, and after that, adapt. Uh, this is the active state. Probably HNA domain create the DNA, uh, double strand DNA. And this is a different uh, molecule. Active uh, HNA and that will fluctuation uh, active, inactive the several times. And we don't know that when uh, one DNA, double strand DNA cleave, but HNA uh, uh, probably cleave uh, the double strand DNA in a some of in active state. This is the uh, same movie. This is the active state. And after that, we can see that the cleave double strand DNA are released from the Cas9 RNA complex. This is the uh, active and probably double strand DNA cleave during the, this active state. This is another uh, molecule. So this uh, static structure, static crystal structure and the uh, more dynamic uh, functional uh, a, uh, has been the AFM uh, data suggest the model of uh, action of the CRISPR-Cas9. Well, Cas9 first recognized uh, the NGG PAM sequence on the uh, double strand DNA uh, close next to the target site. And the RNA uh, DNA base pairing uh, form from the PAM uh, proximal region. Uh, uh, and that HNH that fluctuation uh, from uh, act inactive and active uh, confirmation and then adapt the act active confirmation and to uh, to generate the double stand DNA break. Uh, Cas9 bind the CRISPR RNA trace RNA dual uh, guide RNA or artificial single guide RNA, sRNA, and cleave target the double stand DNA using two nucleate uh, nucleus domain HNH and the lab C. In contrast, Cas12 enzyme, Cas12A use a uh, much shorter guide RNA, only single CRISPR RNA, and recognize T rich uh, PAM sequence and cleave uh, double strand DNA target using uh, single lab C domains. Uh, since Cas9 and Cas12A have a robust DNA cleavage activity in eukaryotic cells, uh, and gen, uh, generate the double strand DNA breaks at the target site in eukaryotic cell. So uh, the Cas9 and the Cas12A are widely used for uh, genome editing tools. Uh, we and other groups determine the crystal structure of uh, Cas9 and the Cas12A uh, in distinct functional state. Uh, that's providing the mechanistic insight into the RNA guided DNA cleavage mechanisms. Although Cas9 and Cas12 lack sequence uh, similarity in the other region, except for conserved lab C domains, uh, colored CN in this figure, uh, they adapt uh, both adapt uh, by law of the structure uh, where the guide RNA and the target. Uh, DNA heteroduplex accommodate between the uh, two lobes. Despite the similarity in the overall architecture, 
there are notable mechanistic differences in the uh, guide RNA recognition and the target DNA uh, cleavage. For example, as I told, as I tell you uh, uh, before, the Cas9 use uh, two nuclease domain HNH and LabC, uh, whereas Cas12 they use a single LabC active site to cleave uh, both strand, the MTS non-target DNA strand and uh, target DNA strand. And uh, among the CRISPR-Cas enzymes, Cas12 uh, family enzymes are uh, very interesting and high, extremely diverse and divided in several groups. But, uh, Cas12 uh, enzyme is much diverse compared to the Cas9 enzymes. And uh, importantly, a recent study identified the Cas12F, uh, previously classified the Cas14, uh, exceptionally compact Cas enzymes. Cas12F uh, consists of only around uh, 500 amino acids and some Cas12F uh, uh, around four, four, 400 amino acids, more comp much smaller than the Cas9 and the Cas12F, uh, both uh, uh, more than 1,000 amino acid lists usually. And, and the Cas12F lacks a sequence similarity identity with other Cas protein, except for uh, conserved LabC domains. And uh, interestingly, Cas12F is a compact, but you, uh, the Cas12F use a, a much larger guide RNA uh, uh, that is consists of uh, CRISPR RNA and trace RNA like a Cas9, and, and unlike a Cas12A. Uh, and this, uh, Cas12F guide RNA lack a sequence similarity with other guide RNA for other Cas enzymes, Cas12, including Cas12F, uh, including Cas12. And very recently, several groups reported that engineered Cas12F or other uh, orthologs, uh, such as AS Cas12F, uh, have a uh, double strand DNA cleavage activity in the eukaryotic cell and can be used for a very compact genome, new uh, genome editing tool. However, the, how this miniature Cas12F mediated RNA guided DNA cleavage remain unknown. So to understand its actual mechanisms, uh, uh, we set out to determine the 3D structure of Cas12F bound to guide RNA and uh, target double strand DNA target. Um, this project was done by a uh, master school student, uh, Satoru, together in uh, Nureki's lab. Uh, we first purified Cas12F protein and guide RNA, and then reconst reconstituted the Cas12F guide RNA and target DNA complex by mixing the, the component, purified component, and then purify that tannally complex on uh, gel filtration. The, the complex peaks looks not very good, but contain the Cas12 F protein, the guide RNA, so DNA. So we uh, next uh, use uh, uh, this purified uh, complex sample for crime analysis. The Cas12F complex is relatively small for usual cry em analysis, single particle analysis. So actually the particle image uh, didn't look very good, but uh, the particle that looks uh, stain-like image. But anyway, uh, we analyzed the uh, uh, data using the lion and obtained a density map at uh, a 3.3 ohmsome resolution. So uh, uh, this uh, surprisingly, to us, surprisingly, we obtained a high, little bit high resolution density map, and we could in uh, perform a de novo modeling of a Cas12F and the guide RNA and target DNA. As you can see, that we 
uh, observe a clear density for the even side chain of a cast drops like uh like uh shown here and also we can look uh clearly uh see the uh, nuclear base and the force uh right force uh, sugar phosphate backbone of the guide RNA and also target DNA. We can distinguish the uh, purine pyrimidine uh, nuclear base in the, this uh, density map. So we can uh, model the relatively large guide RNA with high uh, confidence. To our supply the structure, uh, revealed that the uh, two Cas12 F molecule uh, called uh, called Cas12 F1 and Cas12 F2 uh, assemble with one guide RNA to form an effector complex. Uh, that is totally uh, uh, surprising and uh, unexpected uh, structure feature. And Cas12 F consists of five domains: uh, zinc finger. Uh, the action uh, uh, card in beige and red domain gray and wedge card in card yellow and lab C and uh, target nucleotide binding domain uh, we name uh, TNB. Uh, while while a wedge and lab C domain share the structural similarity with uh, uh, those of uh, other Cas12 enzymes, uh, zinc finger and REC and TNV have a unique structure, unique to Cas12F, and observed for other Cas12 enzymes. And Cas12F can be divided into amino terminal domain NTD and and a carboxy terminal uh, domain CTD. Uh, which is connected by a uh, flexible linker loop. Uh, in the uh, uh, second Cas12F problem, the NTD and uh, CTD connecting loop uh, disorder, indicating the, fl the flexibility of the two domains. Uh, this is a movie showing the overall structure of the Cas12F complex. The Cas12 F dimer that the by law of the architecture, like other Cas12 enzymes with the guide RNA shown red and the target DNA shown uh, uh, black, uh, heteroduplex bound to the central channel between the two lobes. And the large guide RNA, in particular stem loop four, uh, uh, this is stem loop four, uh, interact with the two Cas12F uh, protoma and play the uh, important role in the complex formation like a spine. And we found the notable structure differences in the spatial arrangement between NTD and CTD of the two protomers, uh, indicating that Cas12F undergo a structure change upon guide RNA binding. Especially uh, zinc finger and wedge domain in the second protoma are uh, totally disorder in the structure, indicating that these domains are very flexible and don't have a, a specific conformation. In contrast, these lesions, the finger and the wedge in the first protoma are uh, well ordered and interact with the guide RNA. So uh, a uh, the same domain has a different role in the two protomas. Very, this is a very inter interesting uh, structure feature. Uh, based on the nucleotide sequence, a previous study suggested that guide RNA of the Cas12F uh, contain four stem loops, uh, stem loop one uh, to stem loop four uh, in a trace RNA and uh, one repeat and anti-repeat duplex uh, between CRISPR RNA and trace RNA. 
However, the uh, our structure revealed that guide along the scaffold adapt a more complex, unexpected architecture comprising the five stem loops, stem loop, uh, stem one to stem five, and the uh, uh, characteristic uh, uh, pseudonaut uh, structure. Uh, this is a totally unexpected, very complex, uh, unexpected structure of guide RNA. And stem loop three and pseudonaut uh, coaxially stack to form a continuous uh, duplex. Uh, this uh, complex guide RNA scaffold are uh, specifically recognized by the two protoma of a Cas12F enzyme to form a, a stable complex, effector complex. The, uh, the Cas12F dimerized through two interfaces, uh, mainly in an asymmetric manner. But the primary interface between the REC1 and REC2 is a rather symmetric and formed by hydrophobic races in the, on these two REC domains. The mutation of these, uh, uh, of these hydrophobic races reduce the, the, uh, sorry, reduce the DNA uh, cleavage activity and the combination of these four mutation uh, called RARR mutation abolish the the double strand DNA cleavage activity in vitro. So this in result indicating that the integrity, stretching integrity of the dimer interface is, is critical for uh, DNA cleavage activity of Cas12F. The Cas12F cleave the target strand TS and non-target strand and TS at the 24 and 22 nucleotide upstream on the PAM sequence, respectively, uh, using the uh, probably lab C domain. The other Cas12 enzymes, uh, such as Cas12B and Cas12E, uh, also Cas12A, uh, cleave both TS and NTS at a single lab C domains with a just in TNB domain facilitating the loading, recruiting of the TS and NTS into the RABC active site. A previous functional and structure study uh, demonstrated that uh, such a uh, conserved mechanisms for uh, Cas12F enzymes. In, uh, in the Cas12F structure, the location of RABC1 of the first protoma is similar to those of the RABC domain of other Cas12 enzymes uh, shown here. Uh, well, the lab C2 in the second protoma is uh, close to the five prime end of the, the uh, uh, target strand, but a different positioning uh, to the canonical lab C active site. So we uh, understand the DNA cleavage mechanism Cas12 F dimer, we uh, created structure-based mutant where LabC1 and LabC2 are selectively inactivated. Uh, we found that uh, uh, alanine mutation of a catalytic aspartic acid residues in LabC1 in the first protoma, but not LabC2, uh, abolish the DNA cleavage activity suggesting that lab C1 cleave uh, both TS and NTS as observed in other Cas12 enzymes. The present structure of Cas12 before the insight into the molecular evolution of diverse Cas12 F uh, family enzymes. A structure comprised of the Cas12 F with uh, Cas12 A and Cas12 B and Cas12 E uh, revealed the mechanistic diversity among the Cas12 uh, enzymes. Uh, these Cas12 enzymes specifically assemble with uh, their cognate guide RNA with different architecture. Cas12 use a very short CRISPR, only CRISPR RNA, whereas Cas12A and Cas12B uh, e user dual 
CRISPR uh, and tracer. But the, their CRISPR tracer dual RNA uh, structurally totally di uh, distinct, different. Notably, and rec domain of Cas12 F is formed by small rec domain uh, from two protomats in the dimer. In contrast, the rec domain, uh, rec lobe of the other Cas12 enzymes uh, consists of their rec one and rec two domains. So uh, this structure finding suggested that larger monomeric Cas12 enzymes such as Cas12 A, B, E, uh, gained additional domains or uh, during the over, uh, over time and evolved from the smaller dimeric Cas12 F-like enzymes. Uh, this work was done in Nureki's lab in the University of Tokyo, and I'd like to Professor, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Osamu Nureki's and uh, uh, lab members, in particular uh, Satoru, who solved the Cas12 F, F enzymes. And uh, I started my own lab last year at the University of Tokyo. Uh, and the uh, uh, RCAST Research Center of Advanced Technology and Science. And um, I began with the room uh, renovation last, uh, last year, and uh, we started the experiment around the end of uh, the last year. And we now uh, doing the structure and the functional studies in my lab, and we are looking for motivated graduated students and the postdoc uh, who are interested in the structure and the functional analysis of proteins and the nucleic acid, such as the CRISPR related enzymes and also other new uh, systems. If you are interested, uh, please contact me. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nishimashu, for that enriching talk. Uh, lots of new information and also for decoding such a complex structure, which will surely enhance our understanding of genome editing mm. tools. Also great to see the transformation of your lab, especially during the pandemic. Uh, great to see uh, so many people <laughs> yeah. together. So I received a lot of questions in the chat box. So I'll, uh, if you allow me, I can uh, go through a couple of them and hopefully we can cover most of them with the time that we mm. have. Uh, so we have first question from Nibedita Mitra. What is your view about CRISPR-Cas system? on long non-coding RNA editing, how much it is effective and the techniques and procedures and the enzymes that we used in oh. general for link yeah. RNA editing. Yeah, CRISPR-Cas is a very powerful tool for starting the function of link RNA. And uh, I understand actually several group are al already use a CRISPR-Cas to uh, study the link RNA. Uh, function and also uh, CRISPR Cas9 enable us to delete the link RNA sequence from the genome. Also, uh, in addition, uh, you know, the we can now uh, use have a activation tool, transcriptional activation tool. So, some group in probably Penzance lab use a activate CRISPR activation system to explore the. Uh, non-coding, long non-coding link RNA uh, function recently, uh, a couple of years ago or last year. Mm. So uh, CRISPR is a very powerful tool for studying the link RNA. Like, and uh, I also hope and looking forward to new finding of uh, link RNA function. Okay. Uh, so we have a next question from Manish Mandotra. How CAS12F.1 uh, variant is different from CPF1. You know how Cas12F is different? From CPF1. How different? Yeah. Mm. CPF1. So CPF1 is uh, identical to Cas12A. The CPF1 is a format name. So uh, I'm sorry, um, back to slide compare. Oh, this. 
this is a CPF one. Uh, we determined the structure in two, 2016. The CPF one use uh, uh, first CPF one, Cas12 A is much larger than Cas12 F and use a uh, very short guide RNA, CRISP RNA. And, but the function is very, very similar. Uh, RNA guided uh, double stand DNA cleavage. And probably now, although that several group reported that Cas12F can be used as an efficient genome editing tool in human cells, but I know, uh, I understand that still CPA finds uh, have a robot, more robust activity in human cells. So uh, bit probably su superior, a better uh, genome, I'm uh, not better, but still robust ed genome editing tools like uh, Cas9 in human cells. But uh, many people, researchers say that the Cas12F is a uh, compact and uh, have an uh, advantage in the packaging adeno-associated virus uh, delivery to target tissues. So uh, many researchers pay, uh, pay much, have uh, much attention to this compact uh, Cas12F mediated gene editing now. Right. Okay. There is a question from all of that. Have you thought of understanding the structure of prime editors? Prime editor. Hmm. Uh, I also interested in the structure of the prime editor. The, the, the question is total. Understanding prime the structure of prime editors, like how the Cas9 and the pig RNA is actually bind. And yeah. those kind of movies that you have decoded for CRISPR Cas9 have you thought of in the prime editing? Yeah, I'm an um, I and the other. Uh, structure was also probably interested in the structure of prime editing the, in the structure viewpoint that you know the prime editor is uh, probably have a some as uh, did a, the task to uh, uh, reverse transcription in the with the sterically yeah yeah uh, if we draw a 2D a schematic, it's a very easy, uh, we can imagine that it's a not so difficult, easy task. The reverse transcription by prime editor using uh, uh, PEG guide RNA as a template for uh, RT. But in the, when we think about uh, considering the 3D structure, it's not so Easy task. So um, many structure biologists understand the how the prime editor, my RT, reverse transcriptase uh, mediate exerted reverse transcription uh, reaction in together with a, a Cas9 and a guide RNA. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a very interesting question. Next work, future work. Right, right. Uh, we have an, another question from Akash Jadav. Uh, does Cas1, Cas2 randomly select a PAM and cut the adjacent viral genome and integrate into bacterial CRISPR array? If oh. yes, then why does bacteria need Cas9 guide RNA complex? <laughs> yeah. no, but viral DNA cannot do its function. So why bother for forming a Cas9 complex? If there is a next oh. infection, Cas1, Cas2 complex can just cut it randomly. Hmm, that's very uh, not good, great question. And the Cas1, Cas2 not, don't land, doesn't randomly uh, cut the, the foreign nucleic acid. User uh, Cas1, Cas2 also recognize the PAM in that the, the recognition mechanism is, manner is different from the CRISPR Cas types. And also recently, Ion Kids Lab uh, reported uh, how the Cas1, Cas2 uh, recognize a PAM, a PAM dependent uh, integration 
using the structure of biology and the function analysis. And, and they reported I, um, very recently in Nature uh, and uh, uh, also pro, pro previously uh, many scientists uh, studying the how Cas1 Cas2 recognize, first recognize and cut the uh, target uh, by uh, viral of phage genomes, DNA. And in, I understand that in type two system, Cas9 also involved in the selection of target, uh, um, target, no, how to say, target selection together with the Cas1, Cas2, or the, my other proteins such as CSN and uh, so uh, that how the Cas1, Cas2 that select the target DNA is one of the most interesting uh, field in the CRISPR-Cas system. And uh, we know that many things, but uh, we also don't know that, uh, we don't know completely understand the mechanisms. Right, okay. Uh, hopefully that answers Akash's question. We have another question from Dushan. Do all the mutations in the residues along the dimeric interface resulted in change? in the solution of the oligomeric status of Cas12F? Oh, yeah, yeah, that is also a good question. Uh, we tested the uh, solution behavior of a uh, mut mut mutation, mutant in the dimer interface. But uh, uh, we expected that the dimer interface mutant uh, failed to assemble and form a dimer in solution. And that's why uh, the dimer reduce or abolish the DNA cleavage activity. But we, when we tested the assembly of the mutants of Cas12F, dimer interface mutant in the gel filtration, uh, we found that uh, this a dimer uh, mutant format uh, dimer like a wild type. So uh, uh, indicating that the dimer a mutation, mu mutation at the dimer interface, uh, even when that uh, such a mut mutation abolishes the DNA cleavage activity, the form uh, dimer. So we interpret that the structural integrity of the dimer interface is critical for <laughs> DNA cleavage activity. If, right. uh, yeah, if even although that such a mutant form a dimer, dimer, but uh, this by slight conformation is probably important for DNA recognition and the cleavage uh, reaction. Right, okay. I think we have covered all the questions, but I'll end with one of my own question is, so uh -huh. there is some recent discovery on transposon family proteins from Dr. Feng Zhang's lab on having uh -huh. RNA guided endonucleus activity, which are very smaller than the Cas9. Mm -hmm. Do you think that opens up new paths to in vivo genome editing delivery tools? Oh, yeah. Mm, I understand that the, the very small the Cas9 like uh, protein uh, transposon enzymes uh, have a very low but uh, slight activity in, in human cells. So I am thinking that many researchers all over the world uh, pay attention to improve engineer or some other uh, trick, use a trick to improve the activity of the very small and that uh, transposes enzyme to for the use of uh, genome editing. Import, yeah, related these things, the, you know, as I told, uh, simply, yeah, Cas12F is, uh, as you may know that uh, the Cas12F activity is very weak, even uh, especially under high, normal co salt concentration, hand, 150 millimolar NSL abolished the uh, DNA cleavage activity of Cas12F. Uh, 
when Jennifer Downer's lab uh, originally, and uh, after that, the uh, sickness lab also reported that Cas12 F is very sensitive to salt concentration. Probably the inhibit the assembly, dimeric assembly of Cas12 F. That is and in, in vitro. So, and actually, sickness lab only uh, first in in the first uh, paper they failed to use uh, Cas12 for genome editing. But very recently, the uh, three groups reported the genome editing by using the Cas12F. And uh, this group uh, used uh, UN Cas12F, originally uh, identified Cas12, and, and we determined the clear clivium structure of UN Cas12F, a very weak activity in vitro. But they use a protein engineering and also guideline engineering, uh, mainly uh, deleted uh, la long flexible region in the uh, also a uh, structure uh, reveal. That this engineering improved ar around 1000 times higher activity in the human cell. These uh, and protein and guide RNA en engineering Starting much improved activities. And so uh, it's a possible that such an engineering, pro molecular engineering, uh, improved the uh, uh, DNA cleavage activity of the very small transposon derived Cas ancestor protein. And yeah, it's also pro possible that such an engineered enzyme can be used as a compact, effective genome editing tool, new tool. Right, mm. right. No, I totally understand that. Uh, well, with that, we are towards the end of the session. Thank you, everyone, for joining and also asking these fantastic questions. Thank you, Hiroshi, for taking the time to speak on our platform and Thank also you. to answer all these questions. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed uh, today's talk. We have a second lecture tomorrow lined up for to celebrate the World CRISPR Day by Professor Neville Sanjana from the New York uh, Genome Center. Uh, you do, people who have already registered through this link, you don't have to re-register it. Just join the same Zoom link tomorrow at 7 p.m. IST and 9.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern, Eastern time. With that, thank you very much uh, uh, to, uh, to Professor Hiroshi Nishimashu for taking time. It's thank quite late, uh, late in Japan, so have a great night. And <laughs> most of us, uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.